When you walk with God in the amen, it is prescribed the order. He's constantly talking to you. He's constantly telling you about the needs of his church. God don't have but one business, and that is the ministry of reconciliation. God is concerned about his church 24-7. God is concerned about his church 366 days a year. Every hour, God's church is on his mind. So much so until he put his son on the rugged cross for the people uh, to uh, uh, have salvation. So we as the people of God should not ever take what Christ has done for granted. When we come to church, we don't come to church like we come to a ball game. In fact, I've had the privilege, y'all know I'm not sports inclined at all, but I've had the privilege of going to games and I see a whole different demeanor on the faces of people uh, that I church with at a game than I do at the church. At the game, they loud. At the game, they rude. At the game, they scream it to the top of their lungs. At the game, they be a One minute, they up looking this way. Next minute, they sit down. They up looking that way. They hollering, come on, come on. But when they come to church, they your heart has to be led by the Spirit. Glory to God, rather than just looking in the book and finding something to preach about. Amen. I hear a lot of times preachers say, well, I was up all night, amen, trying to see what the Lord would say. Don't take all of that. Yeah. When you walk with God in, in amen, in the prescribed order, he's constantly talking to you. He's constantly telling you about the needs of his church. God don't have but one business, and that is the ministry of reconciliation. God is concerned about his church 24-7. God is concerned about his church 366 days a year. Every hour, God's church is on his mind. So much so until he put his son on the rugged cross for the people uh, to uh, uh, have salvation. So we as the people of God should not ever take what Christ has done for granted. When we come to church, we don't come to church like we come to a ball game. In fact, I've had the privilege, y'all know I'm not sports inclined at all, but I've had the privilege of going to games and I see a whole different demeanor on the faces of people uh, that I church with at a game than I do at the church. At the game, they loud. At the game, they rude. At the game, they scream it to the top of their lungs. At the game, they get a jet. One minute, they up looking this way. Next minute, they sit down. They up looking that way. They hollering, come on, come on. But when they come to church, they The referee or uh, the coach or whatever out on the field don't have to look up in the grandstands and say, come on, give me an amen. They don't have to say, come on, put your hands together. You automatically do that. But when we come to church, we got to pride. We got to coach you. Come on, say amen, somebody. Come on, say praise the Lord, amen. And it's sad. Nobody at the game lay on a rugged cross on your behalf. In fact, if you ask them, if they don't tell you off, they'll cuss you out because they ain't into that. You know, y'all praying with me? But church folk can flip on you in a minute. I wish I had somebody. Glory to God. But Pastor Wooden was talking about the plight of the church and the fact that the church is about to ruin itself because it's so preoccupied with itself and the things of the world that the things of God is barely getting done. I want to tell y'all today it is important that we remember who we are and whose we are. It is important for you to know you're not just a musician, but you are a musical warrior, and you're playing an intricate part in your music. Give it the very best you got. It will be creative, glory to God, but remember who you are doing it for. Don't get wrapped up in how much have you going to pay me. Don't get wrapped up, glory to God, who will see you on the stage, but think in terms of that gift that you got it is to glorify God first and foremost. I was I had some life about ministry. Gotta do this way God's way if you want God's results. I'm just concerned about you. I'm just, I'm just checking on you. That's how I Lord of God, I want to know of your affairs. I want to know of your spiritual status. I want to know of your spiritual state. I want to know if you're worthy of being called preacher. I want to know if you're still worthy of 
be calling the church mother or different. I don't want to know if you're real and you're the real deal. We ought to check on each other. Not for the purpose of gossip, not for the purpose of being nosy, but I genuinely, I never notice the text. He says, for I have, glory to God, no man like mine who will naturally not force to impress, but naturally care. Oh, you can tell when folk got a natural love for folk. They put up with your mess for your good. Uh huh. They'll go that extra mile for your ignorant self. Lord God, but we can be some, we can be some booger bear. Some of us are really the hope. We just ain't turned green today. Are y'all praying with me? Put the right circumstances and you'll see them. They swell up. But who naturally cares about people? And can I tell y'all something? When you go in and out among people, hey man, show concern. Take time to shake somebody's hand. Ask them how you doing. Who are you? My name is Sir. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. You know, just go out in the order. Hey man, don't, don't go. I watch, I watch gospel artists sometimes. It's so grand. It's so grand. They're sitting over there in the corner waiting for everybody to come. I know you. Yeah. Uh, just sometimes go out and go, how you doing? Yeah. Thank you for coming to the concert tonight. Yeah. We appreciate you. Hey, how you doing? What's your name? Hey, man, you'll have folk talking for, for weeks. Oh, in the things of God, all of us be more real and be different. You can find singers, you can find preachers who mimic singers and preachers, but rarely can you find those who are of the first kind. Are you praying with me? They're setting precedents. Amen. They're just not becoming mini me's. You got a lot of mini me's in the pulpit. Lord of God, you got a lot of mini me's in quartet groups. You got a lot of mini me's in churches. Amen. But who in a, among us can say, I am a, the real deal? Lord of God, if God had to vouch for me like he did Job, I would pass the test with flying cars. I'm not talking about those of us who got to say, well, you know, ain't nobody perfect. We want to grab that real quick. Glory to God, when we want to cover up the flaws that we've got. Glory to God, and you know, everybody got some skeletons in the closet. That means you ain't got room for your clothes because your closet is full of skeletons. But is that any time in your life you have made a decision, Glory to God, that I'm going to clean out the closet, I'm going to clean up the house, I'm going to be what God intended for me to be, I'm going to shine like the light that I am, and I'm going to be salty like the salt that I am. I'm going to make a difference in the world wherever I go. So I want to tell y'all that God is looking and he's booking and he's checking us out. Glory to God. And he's waiting to see if there's any of us he can send. Glory to God to the kingdoms of the world. Is that any of us he can send to the president and to the White House? Is that any of us he can send to the Vatican, to the Pope? Is that any of us he can send, amen, around the world? We ain't depending on no record label. We ain't depending on some rich guy. We got God. Amen. He just waiting to see if that anybody he can show himself strong to, he will take up the yoke and work. Are you a real worker? Or are you a shirker? We got to be concerned about one another. I want you to make it. I want you to be the best you can be. I want God to get the glory out of your life, but you got to want the same thing. So I'm telling you now, it's time to stop playing church. It's time to stop hiding behind religion. It's time to stop hiding behind the yes, Lord, and glory and become the man or the woman that God wants you to be. When you become the person that God wants you to be, things that you used to do, you will not do anymore. Places that you used to go, you will not go anymore. Why? Because there has been a change 